Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Karen Marsdale and I'm Interim President of the Greater Reading Chamber of Commerce and Industry and you're watching Member Spotlight. And with me today is Steve Goebel from the Goebel Group. Good afternoon, Karen. Nice to have you here, Steve. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm excited to share what I do. And well, and you've got a great story and I know we've met uh, a few months ago, I think formally, yep. um, when we were involved in the leadership conference at Penn State for mm -hmm. 10th and 11th grade students, which was a great day and lots of fun. Yeah, I, I chair, that was, that was the first time we met in a nice social setting, but also a great way to meet with the, uh, the, the kids and add value and empower the kids. Right, uh, right. And I chaired, uh, co-chaired that committee for the men's side. And right. it's a great thing that the Reading Chamber does in support of the youth and the oh, next generation. Gosh. It makes you walk away that day and say, okay, there is, there is a future ahead for, yes. for the community. So, Absolutely. Um, and so thank you for that, that, that volunteerism. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, what you do every day when you get up. Um, I, I think you have a lot of fun with what you do, and I think you're very passionate. <laughs> and that's the way everyone should be, because if you don't, you're really kind of missing the boat in, in life. So. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm, I'm the owner of the Global Group and a founding partner of the John Maxwell team. Now, what does that mean when I tell people I'm the founding partner? Well, if you're familiar with leadership or communication, uh, John was named the number one leadership expert in the world he in is 2014. Amazing, yeah, he is an amazing human being. Um, and it's that John Maxwell. People ask, wait, that John Maxwell? Yes, that John Maxwell is a business partner. Um, but what I do is I help to build people and solve problems. Uh, people out there in jobs uh, still want to have, have, make a difference in their jobs. The team they're a part of wants to make a difference. And despite the technology we have, I'm still a firm believer that a business is only strong as the people within that business. Well, it's interesting you say that because the um, one, someone that we've just interviewed recently, um, John Widenhammer from Widenhammer um, Technology Company. And of course, you know, absolutely, we need technology mm -hmm. um, to run our worlds. But you know, it really is all about the people. It really is because people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Oh my gosh, where did you get that? I say that all the time. Oh, uh, I got that, that from Bob Berg. Okay. Are you familiar with Bob Berg? He's written a number of great leadership okay. books. Okay. Um, yes. But people do business with people they know, like, and trust when everything else is equal. Absolutely. Now, now, now price is still an important factor. There's no doubt sure. about it. But we feel more comfortable when we trust somebody. And trust is a foundation for any positive relationship. Absolutely. And in business, that still rings true. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, inter interestingly, um, I work with a, a uh, a group that does business assessments or um, employee assessments for the business world. Although it could do it for the nonprofit world as well. But one of the things that um, in assessing, you know, a, a, a prospective employee mm -hmm. um, is to find out really what their level in terms of traits and behaviors, their integrity and mm -hmm. their trust factor is. And that's so important. So that's really what you're talking about. It's not training, though training is a component of it, but right. it really is that. It, it, it is that because, like I said, people want to have, you know, they want to be inspired by what they do. They don't just want a job. They really, but they need to be challenged and they need to be led. One right. of the misconceptions that a lot of people have that management and leadership are synonymous. And you manage mm -hmm. systems and processes, but you lead people. Right. And that's where I try to work with companies and individuals to help them lead themselves, but also to grow their business. Because business, at the end of the day, you need to make a profit. There's no, right. you know, that's, right. that's and business. There's, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, absolutely not. So I work with them to help them with their people and themselves as, as, you know, through executive coaching to get the results they're looking for from a business standpoint. Now, what led you on this path and to this journey mm -hmm. what, that you are now embarking upon? Um, the short answer is I got fired when my daughter was 12 days old. Oh dear. Yes. Um, That's not a pleasant experience ever. It's, it's not, but looking back, it's one of those experiences, yes, it was a blessing in disguise. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was an operations manager for a small company uh, and we had, I started a coaching division within that company and helped to grow that business by 200% uh, in four years. Wow. Um, and then a client recruited me and change is easier talked about versus implemented. And when I went to this new client, it was also inserted into some family dynamics. Oh dear, yes, we and, know about that. Yes, and uh, when you go up against the brother-in-law, even though the brother-in-law was losing money, you still kind of lose sometimes. And that's what happened, because change is easier talked about versus implemented. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, my daughter was 12 days old, wife, stay-at-home mom, one income, and all of a sudden that income is gone. 
So I took a few weeks, this was the fall of 2010, took a few weeks to gather myself, to, to learn how to be a dad and a husband at the same time. That's, that's the hardest job I had, is being a father and a husband. Sure. Um, and then in 2011, uh, the opportunity to partner with John Maxwell popped up. And I'm also a big believer, if you're not willing to bet on yourself, why should somebody else? So in uh, March of 2011, I bet on myself, became a founding partner of the John Maxwell team. And five years later, my business is growing, um, helping other businesses and helping other people. And so that's, that's the short answer. <laughs> well, that's, that's a great story. And of course, I have great um, admiration for John Maxwell, have read his books, uh, have, have certainly been um, um, uh, an attendee of, of the LeaderCast um, mm -hmm. um, the, um, uh, what, what do we call simulcast. it? Simulcast. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so, um, tell me a little bit about that. Are you involved on on that level with with John and you know the great teams that he he will bring into one particular place, and then and then that you know that that day long session or half day session with all these great thought leaders come together and you can watch and be a part of that and view it as though you're right there with them on the stage. No, absolutely. And that's, uh, uh, the, the event is called Live to Lead. It's a half day professional development event. It takes place Friday, October 7th at the American Music Theater in Lancaster County. Oh, so it's uh, a lovely venue too. Yeah, I, I, this is the third year I've hosted the event. Uh -huh. uh, the first two years I had it at Shady Maple, which is another great venue. Uh, but it just, it just keeps getting bigger and better, and I needed to, to change venues. Um, but I'm excited that Dan Cathy, uh, Liz Wiseman, and uh -huh. Simon Sinek are going to be joining John on stage. Now, they will be live in Atlanta, so they're not going to be in Lancaster, unfortunately. Um, but they'll be live in Atlanta and simulcast live to the American Music Theater. And it's going to be a great morning of not only business building for yourself and networking, but also learning from very experienced professionals, globally recognized, who can share their wisdom and insight. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. I think that that's probably one of the, um, if you um, look at that model, which is really um, a tremendous model, is that John has brought together, um, you know, just the best of, you know, this great, this great mind trust, this brain trust mm -hmm. of people, um, particularly from the business world. And sometimes I know it's from other, you know, whether it might be uh, someone in sports or somebody in the military. Um, so can you can you just in, in sharing about your practice? Um, why, you know, we do, and, and I know that you're working actually with the chamber right yes. now mm -hmm. in doing some of our um, training and mm -hmm. development. And, you know, we, we always kind of wonder why it is that because your human capital is the most expensive thing on your balance mm -hmm. sheet for any business, regardless of what it is that you're doing, mm -hmm. why folks don't feel more passionate about the fact that you've got to really um, hone and train and develop, particularly when we see this gap, which many employers are talking to me yep. about, mm -hmm. about the skills gap and about the leadership gap. Mm -hmm. And they're concerned that where are they going to find the next um, level and the next generation of leaders coming up? Absolutely. And, and leadership is a skill. It's part of that skills gap that is, is like you mentioned, mm -hmm. a challenge you know, big and small companies face. Absolutely. And the biggest challenge I see from talking with clients, potential clients, is the return on investment isn't immediate. And we live in a society where everything is immediate. We want our money now. We want our Netflix movies now. We want our, uh, you know, our, our food now from the microwave. Everything is so instantaneous. But one of the things that John teaches about is the law of process. It develops daily, not in a day. And it's something you have to continually do. So from a company standpoint, and I get it, they, you know, they're looking for a return on investment, as any business should be. But the return they're going to receive is months or years even mm -hmm. versus that next quarterly stock price they have to answer to investors or that next meeting with the family if they're a small business family owned why are we doing this um, and it's change sure. Ch you know, again change is t easier talked about versus implemented right and so there's these whole different avenues of you know fear and return on investment that prevent them from fully taking advantage of it. Right, so, right. But it's, it starts with a conversation. Yeah, it does, it does. And I think that that's one of the things that um, uh, we try to do so often mm -hmm. um, in explaining the chamber. Mm -hmm. And what we do is there's a plethora of things that go on. But you know, in that, in that whole world of you know, finding the right employee, having the right employee in the right um, place um, in the organization, on the team, and the team rowing in the same direction. You mm -hmm. really just have to invest in that. You do, and, and it does take that time. Right. Um, so it's, it's 
it's interesting when I do talk to the clients that I, that I do get versus the ones that don't come on board or they go with somebody else. And that's understandable. I can't service everybody and that's okay. Um, but they see the results in, over time. Right. And they're patient enough to understand, okay, this is a long-term problem. It has been 15 or 20 years in the making maybe, especially in family environments. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get solved in two weeks. It's not going to get solved in one two-hour session. Right. And, and that's the big realization that I know the value the chamber brings with the, what you're doing and what I'm helping to teach through the chamber, um, also with what I do on my own. Yeah, it's, it's great. And I think it's important. And I'm hoping that everyone listening out there will, mm -hmm. will, will really become a believer that you, ju you have to absolutely you have to take care of your people and hone them and train them, just like you take care of the equipment that you mm -hmm. use and all the other pieces of, of property um, around your, your organization. Your people are your, your greatest investment. So I think, you know, um, with that being said, I want to make sure that people know about um, Live to Lead, John Maxwell and um, Steve Goebel going to be involved in Lancaster County. Mm -hmm. Where can they go to get more information about this? Because I think it's a great program. Uh, you can go to my website, thegoebelgroup.com, or you can buy tickets from the American Music Theater at amtshows.com backslash live to lead. And the number two is a number. Um, but again, it's going to be a great event. There's already over 500 people registered to come, and we're still four months Fantastic. out. Fantastic. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and the event will sell out. I'm confident we're knocking on wood here. Absolutely. The event's going to sell out. So if you really want to come, get your tickets sooner than later. Yes, you believe in yourself and you believe in your product. Absolutely. It will sell out. Yes. Well, Steve, it was great to have you today. Thank you so much for, A, being a member of the Chamber. We mm -hmm. love that. And be coming uh, today and talking about you know this great this great work you're doing. Thank you for the opportunity. I love being uh, being a member of the chamber and the value I get out of it. So Aww, thank you. Thank you so much.